Good morning. This is Bill from out of Europa, Naples, on what turned out to be a pretty lovely Florida Monday. The humidity is at bay. Uh, we had a front come through yesterday. You know, you can't really call it a front, but we are getting temperatures in the high 60s this morning, which is nice. The humidity is not terrible, and we've got about two days of that before hell returns, so uh, I'm going to enjoy it. What the hell? Uh, we've got a couple of birds up there watching us, as usual. You know, let me see if I can zoom in on these little bastards. Yeah, there you can hear them tweeting away, calling out uh, commands to the other birds. Hopefully they just stay calm and don't do anything ridiculous or come at me or God knows what they're going to do. Haven't heard anything from the roosters, the peacock. It's all been pretty quiet bird-wise, which is pretty good. Uh, you know, I'm also kind of running out of cars. Uh, since this apocalypse thing hit, uh, I've been on a buying moratorium. I've only been buying stuff if it really just forces its way in. So uh, we're running low. We're getting to some of the crap that was sitting in the back. And uh, maybe some of that stuff will be coming up soon. But otherwise, we're pretty low on inventory, which is just absolutely fine. Uh, by request, I know that I've kind of, you know, angled for it. But by request, this morning I'm going to do a very short... <laughs> I say that, it'll end up being 45 minutes long. Doesn't matter, I'm gonna do a very short review on my Silverado, which uh, frankly is ridiculous, and I think you'll see why as we get into it. Uh, but uh, it does serve a purpose, and it was also the first truck I've ever owned, uh, and it was also the first, maybe, uh, you know, maybe it's top five in terms of vehicles that I have loved. And uh, the, the, I put my money where my mouth is. I drove this thing as a daily driver for basically two years until that Datsun came along and interrupted it. So, uh, you know, it really has won my heart over. Uh, to get into the story of the truck, <clears throat> we have to start with the Spec Miata, uh, the little white number 88 there. Uh, Robert the Pollock, very nice guy. No, he's not a nice guy. Actually, Robert's an incredible asshole, but, um, yeah, but he is part of our crew, and he did get us into Miata racing. You know, it started out with uh, these sort of uh, autocross events, which became track day events, which ultimately became competitive racing in the spec Miata class. And by the time that happened, this little white car went from being an autocross car to a track day car to a spec car where it became fully caged, air conditioning out, uh, and incredibly uncomfortable. And that means no more driving to the track. Uh, so enter in the trailer. Uh, that's a uh, trailer as a long story, actually. Uh, but um, enter in the trailer, and then I needed something to tow the damn thing with. So I decided that I needed a pickup truck. And I know nothing about pickup trucks. I never did. Just was never my thing. I mean, I'll tell you, basically all you want to know about a 123 Mercedes, but when it comes to pickup trucks, one seemed pretty much like another. So for that expertise, I looked to a friend of mine, Life, who, um, you know, knows pickup trucks. It's a hobby of his. I mean, he just, you know, he's just one of these guys who reads, who knows things, who does. He's really irritating, and he's an incredible asshole, just like Robert, uh, but he is a good guy to ask about pickup trucks. And he said, unquestionably, the LS motor in the Chevrolets was the way to go, or the GMC. And uh, I believed him. You know, I mean, you could get into these diesels, you could get into these sort of 2500 things. I really didn't need any of that. What I needed was a good uh, half-ton pickup truck that uh, was comfortable to drive, easy enough to park, uh, carried a lot of my crap, and had enough of a tow rating to move an aluminum trailer with a Miata on it. And uh, this one would fit the bill. Now, we have a local Ford dealership uh, that every week or two does a little in-house auction. And that was one of the places that I was looking for a truck because they often get these very honest little trade-ins. And when I went there, you know, I don't know, what, two and a half years ago, uh, this thing was sitting there. And it fit basically every 
part of the checkbox. It was a, a 2001 model, <clears throat> so it had the first generation LS motor, which is, we'll get into that, but that's a terrific engine. Uh, it was an extended cab version, so I had enough room inside to do some extra stuff. Uh, it had a standard bed on the back, which I, I hate long beds. You can't park the damn things. Uh, so it just all came together perfectly. It was also a one-owner Naples truck, so it had no rust. Uh, it was, however, faded along the top. It had some uh, a lot of cosmetic issues here and there. And that's where Marty got kind of angry with me because he does the accounting here and he claims that what I spent on this truck, we could have just gone out and bought like a Lamborghini LM002 and use that as a tow vehicle instead. I think he's exaggerating a little bit, but um, yeah, maybe not that much. But anyway, there it was. So I got the thing, I painted the tops of it, fixed it up that way, new windshield, because the old one was kind of crusty around the edges, and apparently our glass guy said you can't just pull the windshields without breaking them. So uh, got that, got a new surround so it wouldn't leak inside anymore. And uh, I got into the business of restoring it. And then as I was restoring it, I started adding more stuff to it. And uh, we'll get into all that in a minute. So anyway, this Chevy, it was the first Silverado. Uh, they were CK before this, CK pickup trucks. Uh, Silverado came out in 1999, and Chevy took it all very, very seriously. They wanted it to not offend their very loyal fan base on what is one of the best-selling cars in America. So it essentially looks very much like the old Chevy that it replaced. Uh, but everything else was new. The frame was hydroformed, the lighter, strong better insulated, better truck all around, and people absolutely loved them. Uh, but the main thing, and in fact, you know what, instead of just wasting, we're going to get right into this thing, so I'm going to pop the hood, because this is the whole damn reason I bought this truck. Life explained to me that the LS is a fantastic motor, and I happen to know that from, of course, doing Corvettes and that sort of thing, but uh, getting into this truck sort of explained to me why. <clears throat> I did want to have the 5.3, which was uh, in the half-ton trucks. It was the biggest engine available, and uh, I wanted it to be, uh, again, a Florida truck so I didn't have to deal with all the rust and crap. Uh, but anyway, the LS engine is an amazing, amazing machine. And to, to get into the roots of the LS, you have to go all the way back to 1992, uh, when Chevrolet was deciding what the future of the small block would be. Uh, there was the Gen 1 V8 small block, which is the it's the small block everybody knows from like 1955 through uh, 1991. It's a small block Chevy. I mean, it was the ultimate go-to engine for hot rodding or any other thing that you want to... I mean, you could buy valve covers for it in a 7-Eleven. I mean, it was just the most prolific engine out there. So, big shoes to fill. And Chevy filled them with the Gen 2, which was the LT1, then the LT4, and then finally the LT5. Uh, now, these are push rod engines. And what that means, instead of the sort of modern architecture uh, where the cams run up in the uh, heads, and it'd have one or two cams up in the heads, it uses a cam in the middle of the uh, of the block using push rods that move the valves uh, in a very antiquated sort of way. <clears throat> but anyway, Chevy, in 1992, they brought two different Corvettes to this proving grounds on Black Lake in Michigan and brought all of their, you know, important executives there to drive these two Corvettes. And they didn't tell them what was under the hood of each. There was, uh, in fact, two engines under the hood. There was the LT4, uh, which was... Uh, the most modern version of the Gen 2 push rod engine. You got it in the Collector Edition Corvette. And then the LT5, which was that double overhead cam uh, ZR1 engine, sort of half designed by Lotus and Yamaha outboards. And uh, they got to drive both cars. They didn't know what was under the hood. And to everyone's amazement, universally, everyone preferred the push rod engine. <clears throat> they said it was smoother, it was easier to uh, move under high speeds. It was just a much lovelier engine to drive around. And that sealed the fate. That did it. So GM decided that the next gen 
small block Chevy was going to continue to be a push rod motor. And this was a pretty big decision from those guys. I mean, it's essentially like saying, okay, we're going to continue to build propeller planes, even though we know jets are around. And, uh, you know, a poor, it reminds me also of a little bit like Porsche with the 911. They wanted to get rid of it, but the purists kept it going. Well, there was just something so lovely about the push rod engine uh, that they decided to keep it. And to do that, they brought in two guys. Well, they brought in one guy who brought in another guy. The first guy was Tom Stevenson. Very nice. Yeah, kind of Steven Stevenson. That eh, doesn't matter anyway. And he was kind of the, uh, the back office guy who uh, made sure that the way was paved for this engine. And he brought on the first chief engineer just didn't get it, didn't work well, didn't go with it, so he was dispatched. Enter a guy named Ed Kerner. Uh, he's an NHRA record holder and GM executive, big into drag racing, obviously, and uh, he was then tasked with being the chief engineer of this Gen 3 LS project, and he brought on a bunch of guys that he thought would be great in developing the engine. And what they did was incredible. Uh, they built what is really and truly one of the most perfect V8s ever made using a lot of stuff that Kerner had learned in hot rodding and, uh, you know, very high-end competition in drag racing. Uh, they took this uh, aluminum block and head. Uh, they made the uh, crankshaft uh, sort of in a case at the bottom of the motor. You know, there's this, uh, you might hear this about old hot rods, two-bolt main, four-bolt main. And uh, what that is is how the crank actually bolts into the block and how many bolts it uses to do so. Four is more heavy-duty than two. Uh, well, the LS was designed as a six-bolt main. So it's got four bolts on the bottom and then two on each side of the uh, supporting bearings, which is an incredibly stiff and strong architecture. On top of that, it uses pull from the bottom head bolt. So uh, the bolts that hold these aluminum heads in, uh, on this truck they are aluminum, even if the block is metal or iron. Uh, but the bolts are super long. They go way down towards the bottom of the webbing on the oil pan, uh, which is also a structural part of the engine. And using that setup, it made the motor incredibly tight and stable all around to the point that it can be hot rodded up into the thousand horsepower range uh, without too much issue. Uh, I mean, you try doing that on a you know late model Ford modular engine with the overhead cams, it's going to explode out the hood. It just can't handle it. The way that this uh, LS engine can. And that is part of what makes these things so great. So anyway, you know, you got a bunch of different stuff. The accessories bolt directly to the block. That helps with structural rigidity. Uh, it uses, uh, uh, what do you, coil packs over the... Um, uh, over the spark plugs, you know, a lot of nice modern stuff. And it won a very prestigious Engine of the Year award uh, after it was made, which again, for it to win that over all of these overhead cam architecture engines <clears throat> was very much like, um, you know, the, uh, giving a dinosaur credit for being, you know, more modern than a horse. <laughs> it's just something that wouldn't have had, I know, dumb analogy, but it, just something that wouldn't have happened. So anyway, it had to have that motor. Uh, also had a, a very stout uh, four-speed uh, automatic, the 4L60E. Uh, the tranny did, oh God, the transmission did go once in this thing, and I had to rebuild it, but now yeah, we'll get into that in a minute. You can see I also put um, a PA horn under here. This isn't an alarm. It's for the CB, so I can publicly address people when I'm walking walking down the street and tell them they look like crap. I've also got a barrage of wires and hoses there for the air suspension, but we'll get into that in a minute. But anyway, when I got this thing, I said, okay, let's get it ready. So we changed all the belts, hoses, you know, every hose on the vehicle, you know, changed the spark plugs, did whatever needed to be done to freshen it up and uh, make it tow worthy. Uh, also a new battery and uh, everything just sort of lovely and proper under there. Uh, let's close that down. Uh, it also got new springs and shocks all the way around. Even though people told me I was a little nuts for that, it didn't need them. Thought, what the hell? They're fairly cheap, and it really can't hurt. So new springs, new shocks, and uh, brakes, of course, front, rear. Uh, this Silverado is the first to come with four-wheel ABS as standard, four-wheel discs, so a very modern braking system. Nice stuff. Uh, I decided also, since I was going to be towing with this thing, I was going to install these... Uh, 
airbags in the back, not the stupid ones you see of the low riders that make it, you know, the, the ass drop when you hit the switch. Uh, but uh, Firestone, what do they call Ride Right, something like that. You can see them there. Uh, they're basically helper springs, so they work in addendum to the shocks. You've seen sometimes a truck towing a load that's very top-heavy, very big uh, tongue weight, and the thing looks all screwed up going down the road. You know, the trailer is like this coming off it. Well, if you pump up those air shocks on this thing, the helper bags, uh, what it does is help to level the load. Uh, I also bought one of these sort of cheap uh, Amazon accessory bed covers, worked out nice. Came with a tow package, so it already had a receiver hitch. But, uh, you know, very proper, very uh, good for storing your crap. I've got some crap up there now, a cooler, some jack stands, and a box that has basically the standard kit with this. Now, on race weekend, this thing's going to be completely full all the way to the back with tools and tires and that sort of thing. But uh, that's just enough to drive around. For giggles, I also put LEDs in basically everything. I found new taillights to put on because the other ones were crusty. I put LEDs in them, uh, LEDs in the license plate lights, LEDs in that uh, new um, cargo and third brake light up there, LED headlights, everything LED. I don't know why. It just seemed like something to do when I was bored, and it worked out fine. Uh, I also put some antennas on it. We'll get into that in a minute. But uh, Robert, who I mentioned before, gives me an awful lot of flack for these antennas. Uh, the front end of it was chipped up a little bit on the hood, so uh, this isn't here to protect it. It's here to hide all the chips uh, and other little Amazon, you know, what have you. Uh, also had our wheel guy do the wheel, so they shined them up a little bit. I put new emblems on it because they were all crappy. Uh, these LS emblems on the side were so sticky and nasty, you couldn't see the LS and you could put a thumbprint in them. Uh, but, uh, you know, that cleaned them up a little bit. I think I needed a new mirror on that side. You know, far from perfect, but I just wanted it to be a little bit more presentable. Uh, let's have a look inside. I can't believe anybody wants to see this old turd, but they probably don't. All right, so being the extended cab, uh, it's nice because you get that little room in the back if you have extra people or cargo. And uh, being an 01, it went to having four doors instead of just three. The first gen of this thing, uh, I believe it was the passenger door wouldn't, uh, this one over here. This was not a door on the first generation, so if you wanted to put passengers in the back, you had to do it uh, from the other side. By the time this one in 01 rolled out, you had both doors opening, which is nice. Uh, now, okay, so here's a ridiculous Amazon subwoofer. You know, when I started putting a radio in this thing, because I have to have a little bit of a radio in there, it just didn't have any bass oomph at all. Uh, but I didn't want to put a box in it to sort of, let's get under here a little bit. Oh. oh god, everything's heavy. Uh, I didn't want to put a box in there that would take up too much space because I still needed to put a bunch of crap under there uh, when the uh, you know the race weekends would happen. So I found this stupid little thing on uh, Amazon and it worked great. I bolted it to the floor right next to the fire extinguisher, and it gives you know Van Halen that little extra kick that it needs. I also found a Lexus first aid kit here that would Velcro to the bottom of the seat and uh, maybe or maybe not a good spot for a, a Remington 870 marine magnum uh, but you never know when you're going to need to you know take command of a situation uh, but anyway everything nice and proper back there and uh, good cargo area and way better than having the uh, standard cab uh, when we get to Sebring I can drive and have guys in the back seat or I can flip the seat up and have more cargo all very nice stuff I <clears throat> uh, also decided to do a, um, I know, this is getting ridiculous. Uh, I thought it would be a good idea to have a, uh, what do you call it, a dash cam. So I installed one of those. And if you're going to have a dash cam out the front, uh, you should definitely have one that records out the back as well. I mean, if you're rear-ended, what the hell is the point of having a dash cam out the front? So uh, installed that. That was a little bit of a pain in the ass, but uh, did get it going. Uh, I do like all the little pockets you get in these things, places to put stuff. Uh, these back windows, they do vent if you've got uh, 
you know, your friends in the back smoking blunts or whatever it is they're doing. And a uh, very nice sort of chipper place for any Canadian to be. They have pretty good leg room in there. I also got this Amazon accessory uh, versus the Advanced Auto Part accessory. A uh, little garbage bag that hangs on the back of the seat so I can throw my crap out. Keeps everything nice and neat. Uh, you know, more stuff to put things and these cheapy Amazon weather tech copies, all very nice stuff. Uh, I like to keep track of my air conditioning temperature, so I've got a little thermometer in there to tell me what it's blowing at. And this is some little goofy smelly thing that I robbed out of Richard's truck when he wasn't looking, so uh, that helps keep uh, keeps the interior not too not too smelly and uh, being an LT it's sort of middle of the road package so you still do get power seats and this clothy velour stuff that looks like it's right out of a Buick Century uh, pretty comfortable uh, in the glove box I ran some chargers in there so I could have a uh, one of these sort of uh, trouble lights that always is on charge and somewhere in here and yeah, there I've got it connected to something I don't know what the hell what uh, one of those um, converters so I can have 110 but uh, anyway everything working pretty nice in there I labored over what to, I, you know, I thought, okay, do I want to put wheels and tires and lift it and dick around with it? And I just thought, I know, I'm going to keep it as an old man truck, uh, since I am an old man. Labored over what tires to use. It had come with these Yokohamas, and uh, I realized while I was searching for new tires that um, these things had worked pretty well. I'd gotten like 30,000 miles out of them with no issues and uh, made everybody happy. So went ahead and stuck with new ones. Uh, in the back here, what do I got? You know, like a service manual I bought for it. This is a sunscreen. Yeah, a little crap you need getting down the road. Got some Gojo. This is the manuals for most of the stuff. And uh, this is a little locking thing if I need to lock something up. Let's see if I can grab my phone. I'll need that for this ridiculous. Oh, for the love of God. I don't know why everything has to be difficult. Uh, when I got this thing, the seat was uh, intact, but it was all deflated. So I took it to uh, our trim guy to have a new foam pad installed, which he did. Uh, but God damn, did he do a crappy job. It's got all this, I don't know, excess float around crap. You could just tell he did it with absolute hate. And uh, that's just unfortunate. I keep meaning to take it back and have him fix it up again. I've got more crap down here in the... Uh, uh, map pockets, you know, LT, you got power windows, power mirrors, power locks. Uh, it was a real pain in the ass. It didn't come with any remotes. And uh, trying to program it, the only way I got that to happen was by not following the directions uh, that they came with. And let's fire this thing up. Okay, so inside, it's sort of this, you know, I think the interior is pretty well done for a Chevy pickup truck, which historically uh, have been kind of uh, crappy in terms of quality. I don't think this one was that bad. I mean, it's still kind of plastic fantastic, but I've seen a lot worse. Man, where the hell is our phone? I may as well set all this crap up now. You know, everything gets harder when you're on this coronavirus whiskey therapy. I've noticed about coronavirus that the, uh, what is it, the, the, the coverage, the media coverage has gone from we're all going to die to, you know, everything slowly reopening. It seems like we've missed that middle ground where I would have been expecting like a week or two of, you know, everything's holding steady. Uh, but it didn't. It went from, you know, full on we're all going to die to... Uh, now, you know, how soon are the beaches going to be, you know, back in sync? And I don't know. There's something weird about this whole thing. I'm not a big fan, but happy to see things returning to normal anyway. No, I don't want that. Just realized how hard all this crap is to do one hand. There's no way I'm getting this in the mount. Yeah, the hell with it. All right, so uh, you've got this instrument cluster here, which I changed. And the reason that I changed that, I found out that you could 
uh, run the 2500 HD instrument cluster that would give you transmission temperature, and if I'm going to be towing, I didn't think that was a bad thing to have. Uh, I also found out that where this uh, four-wheel drive setup would be in a four-wheel drive truck, this isn't. Uh, it gave you this useless little spot, uh, but a nice little, you know, Amazon tire pressure thing did fit in there fine, so now you can keep track of my tire pressure, which again is good stuff while you're towing. Uh, the dashboard when I bought it was all cracked, nasty, and looked like the Mojave Desert. Uh, I did find uh, one from Vermont or somewhere that has mild sun, uh, and at uh, a fairly great expense, did have to put a new dash in it, at least dash top, but that did make the truck nicer for me. I also changed the steering wheel, which is all crap, you know, just scabby up and nasty. I feel ridiculous doing this truck, by the way. Ridiculous. This is, <laughs> this is just not something that was meant for meant for public consumption. But anyway, it's fine. The steering wheel feels nice to grip. It's got um, uh, whatever the hell you call it. Uh, the tilt wheel, which works good. You got intermittent wipers, cruise control. Fine. Uh, here on the uh, column shifter, if I tap this button here, that gives me tow haul. Uh, that's going to make the transmission not shift as much when I've got a heavy load. God knows I got a heavy load right now. Okay, now don't don't make fun of me for this. I would have been very happy to keep the factory radio, except when you're towing, uh, it doesn't hurt to have a camera because that way you can back up to the uh, tongue on the trailer uh, without having some nitwit guide you. And I've got nothing around here but nitwits to guide me. They'll probably make me smash the tailgate if I follow the direction. So having a camera was a big help. Uh, you know, because of that, it came with stuff that I put to use. Like, uh, you know, having Amazon Music is not a bad idea. Uh, it gives me something cheerful to listen to as I'm driving around. Uh, you also get, um, I don't know what the hell else you get into it. You get your uh, satellite radio, Bluetooth, Pandora, that sort of thing. Everything a snowflake might need. Instagram, TikTok, all of the stuff which I have delved into. As long as I have Apple CarPlay, I'm good enough. I can do what I need to do. And uh, it's all just fine. Uh, I also can watch DVDs going down the road. Uh, Chris set it up so it didn't need to be in park for that. Uh, up here, I added this mirror. Uh, it didn't come with a digital compass mirror. Uh, I don't know why I wanted one, but I did, so I found it on eBay and I installed it. Uh, also, the world's greatest radar detector, uh, the Valentine one. This is an old boy, but it still works great. I shut off the X and K band so I don't get any more uh, crappy fake alarms. It's just KA and laser, so if that thing goes off, I know there's a cop around. Uh, that air suspension in the back I installed up here for reasons uh, that can't be explained. Just seemed like a nice spot for it. There's the pressure gauge. Up will add pressure to the system and down will release it. So all work pretty nice. Also came with a nice setup of you know, little flip down things where you can put your Elvis sunglasses or other crap and that all worked very well. Uh, also put in, okay, the CB thing. Uh, <laughs> We found out that when we're convoying up to Sebring or Daytona, there's like four or five trucks. Having a CB setup is a lot more fun and more useful than just dicking around on cell phones. If there's, you know, a problem in the road, the guy in the front of the chain can say, hey, everybody get in the left lane. It's quicker than doing it on the cell phone and, uh, and absolutely fantastic. And I went through a host of different CBs uh, before I zeroed in on a uh, President Bill for obvious reasons. And uh, this one does work great. Very happy with it. And uh, took a little modding to make it work where this pocket would otherwise go, but uh, absolutely love it. And trucker style, I hung it from one of these, um, you know, whatever the hell it is. So while I'm driving down the road, it's just easy to grab. Uh, I also used a scan gauge. Uh, it gives you, you know, plugs into your OBD2 and gives you the different crap you might need to know what the hell is going on with your engine or not. It's just gratuitous. Uh, I also found this thing on Amazon. Uh, and what that was is a pretty neat setup that will run the uh, tire pressure on the trailer. So I can have all four wheels on the trailer and lets me know where they're at. And uh, if one of them starts going down, I'm going to know it right away. And that's been a very useful thing. I also like the, uh, I put in a brake controller, obviously, for the trailer brakes. Uh, center console wise, um, 
turned out to be a pretty good place for uh, a Colt Lawman Mark III 357. You know, million cops can't be wrong on that one. Uh, I put in one of these Bearcat scanners. Uh, you know, mainly so we can listen to the announcements at the track, uh, but I did set it up to uh, listen to all the local law enforcement, with the exception of the state troopers. Those little bastards use a uh, digital encrypted thing that can't be uh, it can't be tested, so I uh, can't be listened to. But anyway, these do work out nice. Uh, don't have it set up there to hear it yet, but and then there's another little CB accessory that gives me. Uh, 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 key beep and uh, makes it sound like I'm calling in from the other side of the moon. Anyway, there it all is. So, uh, quite a few little cheesy accessories in this thing, but they do bring me great cheer. Now, I have to say, the one thing that I absolutely love about this truck is how nice and easy and casual it is to drive. I mean, it feels like a full-size Buick to me, and that's just A-OK. -okay. Uh, it soaks up the bumps pretty good, especially with the new springs and shocks. Uh, it uses a rack and pinion steering, four-wheel drives have a circulating bulb, and uh, the two-wheel have a very nice uh, rack and pinion steering with uh, maybe a little bit too much on center dead spot, but I guess that's so you don't have to do so many corrections driving down the highway. Uh, brakes, a little bit spongy, but good enough. And of course, being all refreshed, they work pretty good. Now, I did run into problems uh, when I was towing a uh, big trailer up in Georgia. Uh, where uh, the old radiator started overheating. So I ordered a radiator and a uh, fan clutch from a 2500 HD, a more heavy duty pickup truck. Uh, it fits right in, total direct bolt in, uh, but it did make it a little more whiny, that big fan clutch. Probably cuts my fuel economy down too. I keep meaning to put in an electric fan. Uh, I did once send out this engine computer so it would run electric fans if I ever do put them in. And uh, also got rid of the uh, cat efficiency check engine light uh, because the cat uh, had to get dissected, but that's another story. Um, so anyway, in a parking lot full of state troopers, they were having some kind of a convention. I did change the radiator and that fixed my overheating problems uh, on the ride home with that too big trailer. Uh, but anyway, nice little upgrade. So there it is. This is an 01 Silverado, and again, it just won my heart. I just fell in love with this thing. Uh, I did all these stupid little upgrades to it that sort of made me more chipper, and uh, it's fine. It's, you know, what turning radius still sucks, the big one good enough. Uh, and uh, it suits its purpose. You know, it tows the little spec car to Daytona or Sebring or Homestead with no problems. And uh, it's comfortable to drive when there's no trailer connected. And uh, inevitably, I watch the other guys fixing their diesel trucks or, you know, putting shit in their 2500s. You know, this little half ton is fine. Does everything I need it to do and uh, drives nice as well. So, uh, just won me over, you know, and I feel like this is the thing. I feel like the guys who always liked big cars, your full-frame Buicks, Cadillacs, Pontiacs, when all of those went away, where did they have to go but the pickup truck? That was it. I mean, that was the last full-frame, other than a town car, which a lot of people thought was for Matlock, so they're not going to buy it. Uh, but I think your full-size buyer just emanated to the... Um, uh, to the uh, to the pickup truck, and that's why the F-150, the Silverado, uh, the Dodge, they all continue to be the number one selling type of vehicle in the United States because it's what people want. <laughs> you can tell them they want little crappy things, but they don't. They buy what they want, and that's why the pickup trucks have started selling so well and uh, will so for a long time, at least until the government figures out a way to rob that from us, too. So, uh, there it is. I hope everything's going well. hope you're starting to recover from our 50-odd days of the... Wait a minute. What do we have there? That looks like a rooster side of the road. Oh, God, maybe he's been hit. No, it's a pile of grass. All right, so I don't know where the hell these things are. And they're dead somewhere waiting to come out. That friggin' peacock, if he comes by again, I tell you, he looked vicious. Absolutely vicious. 
All right, well, it's safe for now. Anyway, um, thanks for having a look. I appreciate it. Sorry for a video on something probably 1% of you wants to see, but uh, you got it anyway. Uh, I'll try to come up with something more proper for the next video, and uh, I hope you're all hanging in there. I'm glad things are starting to return to normal, and uh, we'll see you with the next one. Take care.